I got a request to make this pin cushion of mine. A couple of um, subscribers seen it and they messaged me and um, when I actually, actually sent a screenshot and said, please do a tutorial on how to make that. This was scrap fabric. It doesn't take very much and you can do all different colors like I did or you can use the same fabric and um, they make cute little gifts too if you've got a friend who um, likes to sew or is just getting into it you could make this for them. This is, I would call this a good beginner's tutorial, um, good beginner's project, I mean sorry about that. Um, because there's really not a lot to it and it may look like it's complicated like oh how'd she get that to you know make that square pin cushion but it's really not that difficult and for the project you're going to need if you're going to do different colors you'll need six different um, patterns of fabric and I've just chosen some from my stash over there that um, some of it's scrap and some of it's these pieces I thought these would make a neat pin cushion the little pattern um, <coughs> fabric that's uh, I think it's McCall's from McCall's or Simplicity I'm not sure and then this that um, my friend Michelle sent to me I haven't used a, a bit of it I think I might have though I don't know I think I used a little tiny bit maybe a fat quarters worth of this but I haven't really used it since she gave it to me because I was saving it for a special project and this seems like a good thing to use it for to uh, make the um, <coughs> Pin cushion. Sorry about that. I, I get out of breath just talking. I guess because I really don't talk much. It's just usually me and Twisty here. So anyway, you're also going to need some fiber fill. And I'm using the, I, I'm not sure if it has like a brand name or anything. That, I mean a type. just says premium polyester fiber fill the original poly fill and it's good for pillows dolls stuffed animals stuffed toys and crafts so that's what I'm using and I'm using the fusible interfacing which is Pellon 809 decor bond and this is a medium weight um, interfacing and the first thing you want to do is get you can use scrap paper uh, newspaper printer paper whatever because it's a fairly small pattern and I'm going to use my quilting ruler and I'm going to make mine it may come out smaller than that one because I made that one a couple of years ago I think and um, I don't know what I did with the pattern for it and I like using this quilting ruler because if you use a scrap piece of paper like I am there's no straight edge on it this came from it was cut from another piece and so all the edges are kind of wonky but if you use your um, quilting ruler it's square and it's easier to get the right measurements so what I'm gonna do is measure mine out three and a half and I'm starting in the middle of the paper. Go ahead and tell me I'm wasting paper. I don't care. And I'm making my little marks here so I know. I think I did the original one at four, but I'm going to make a smaller one for this video. Now I've got that side. You can see that I've got that. Now I just need to turn the ruler around and I will line the ruler up with the measurements on this side where I've already drawn it. Oh crap. That's not what I meant to do. Yeah, I meant to do it like this. Sorry. So anyway, we'll put it at three and a half and three and a half. And if you do it like this, you can do it all in just two passes. So there we have our little pattern. And I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and put this in my handmade pattern box that I've got over there so cut six and you'll know to cut six of the fabric and six of the interfacing and you want the interfacing because it actually it, it makes it more sturdy now what I'm going to do is use my paper cutting scissors Now what I'm going to do is cut the squares out for 
from my fabric. You want to make sure you press each layer. You can lay these out like a couple of layers at a time. I wouldn't do any more than a couple because when you do more than that you tend to um, your cut doesn't come out right. So So I've got this um, six pieces of fabric and six pieces of interfacing and what I want to do is iron each piece of interfacing onto the back of each piece of fabric and just simply put if you're using this interfacing that I'm using the shiny side of the interfacing goes on the wrong side of the fabric and I find the best way to do it is to iron on the fabric side and um, have a bottle of water, spray bottle of water handy that you can spray on it to kind of cool it down and to help it um, to stay on better <clears throat> and you want to press the iron you don't want to rub the iron across the fabric because you might wrinkle the fabric and then it's stuck and you, anyway I'm going to do that with each piece and then we're going to move to the sewing machine Got my fabric here and I've pressed the interfacing on the back of each one and <coughs> I did a video a few years ago where I would put interfacing on something and I, it clearly showed in the video that I put it on there and that I pressed it on there and I had so many people saying I don't understand which side you put the interfacing on. It's Listen is all you have to do. It, it gets a little frustrating when <coughs> people try to slide through that video fast and then want me to re-explain what I already explained in the video. So I, I love questions. I don't have a problem with that if it's something I left out. But if it's in there and I can clearly hear it and see it in the video, then I know that whoever's asking the question just doesn't want to take the time to actually watch the tutorial. So anyway, the interfacing is white it is pressed onto the back side of the fabric and it gives the fabric a little more stability and I, I believe it's kind of necessary for this pin cushion project so the first thing I'm going to do is start sewing these together and there's really no order if you want to put them in a certain order that that is completely up to you and what I'm going to do is just I'll show you one at a time how I'm connecting them and I'm going to use black thread on my machine so you guys can see what I'm doing better so the first thing I'm going to do let's get some of this junk out of the way I'm, is going, I'm going to start um, putting these pieces together but first I'll tell you the machine settings because I'm, I'm going to set my stitch length on 2.5 on my machine I'm going to do medium speed everything else is pretty much um, automatic when I set the fabric to light it'll it actually puts my stitch length down to 2.0 but I like the 2.5 I think the 2.0 is a little too tight of a stitch sometimes and my presser foot is set between the 4 and the 6 and it's more it's closer to the 6 the tension goes automatically between the 6 and the 5 closer to the 6 so first thing we're going to do is just start putting two of these together and you want to do right sides facing together so so you see I've got those two stitched together now what I'm going to go ahead and do is between each stitch that I make I'm going to press open the seams on the back and I'm not going to stop and show you that every time but you'll see it when I speed up the video so okay now we have four and this will make a square so what I'm going to do 
is join the ends together. The last I'm going to put right sides facing together and I'm going to sew a line. Now I have a little square, little box here with open ends on it. So now what I want to do is take this piece and I am going to sew a line and what I'm going to do is open it up to that those flattened ends and it's kind of tricky it's kind of like it's, you know make you little nuts trying to get everything right it's not going to be perfect perfect but um you know once you stuff it and everything you know I'll show you guys a close-up of the first one I did mine right here and you'll see that it might look like oh that's so perfect it's not really that perfect so I'm just putting that inside there and I'm going to start this way and you want to try to kind of if you possibly can skip start where that seam starts on one side there like you don't want to sew starting here on the back of this because it's going to come out uneven so you just need to try to start your stitch if you have to and I probably have to I can see it on this side and I'm going to mark it on this side and I don't want to go over that line because I need that extra fabric from this square on the inside that I'm sewing to do this line and then that line and so on and so forth so See, I've got it sewn in there. Now I want to do the next line. Just sewing all around. Make sure that your stitches meet. You see how that first line I did meets this line? I need to go over just a little bit more and make sure that stitch meets exactly because we don't want a hole in our pin cushion. All right, so now we've got that part. Now we want to sew the last one on. And we're going to go around three and a half sides with this last one. That means we need to leave a hole so we can turn it and stuff it. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it all around and check all the sides and make sure that everything is sewn securely. I do not want anything busting open or any little holes that will eventually become bigger holes. And then I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim these corners, very, being very careful not to trim at the stitch. And the best way to do that is to hold your thumb over and be careful not to cut it. But And right here where I've made the hole, I'm not going to trim this um, selvage but I will around the rest of them. Now what I want to do is turn it. We got it turned, now we want to poke all the corners out. So now you see I've got all the corners turned out. Now I'm going to start stuffing it. You can, so I'm going to stuff it nice and, and just packed with fiber field, just like this one. Because this is a pin cushion and you don't want it getting squished down over time. I used a lot of stuffing in this sucker and it has maintained its um, buoyancy since I made it. And I, you know, it's been a couple of years. So you really want to get in there and stuff that sucker good.
Now I need to close this hole up. And when I did the one I made, I, I didn't, I, I could do a blind stitch and you could absolutely do that if, you know, if that's how you want to do it. But I just did a um, raw blanket stitch right over there. One reason is because I felt it gave it a little bit of character. It's, it is a handmade thing and that stitching just kind of adds to the character of the whole thing. The other thing is <laughs> that trying to blind stitch it just about drove me batshit crazy. So I decided that I would just do the simplest thing. And it, it's maintained, you know, I did... Um, I didn't use embroidery floss or anything like that. I actually just used my normal thread, but I double threaded the needle and it's held up through all of this. So pin cushion, the, you know, really the only wear and tear it's going to get is sticking pins in it. So um, if it's well constructed, it's going to last for a good long time. And I'll do it in black. That way you guys can see better what I'm doing anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this needle through the inside of this fabric so that the knot is on the inside. And then I'm going to come up through both layers. When I pass it through for a blanket stitch, you want your thread to go through, go around the needle. You just want to take it around the needle. So now I have it all closed up and you can work it, you know, and try to get with your hand and get everything stable and even and the way you want it. This one's got a little bit more personality than the first one I made. So now we want to knot up our thread so that we don't lose anything. And I'm going to go through this thread that's right here. And I'm going to stop when I get to a small loop and I'm going to run it through maybe three times don't go any more than that because your knot might knot up before you get to the end of the thread and you want to pull it tight and then what I do is I go I take the needle all the way through into the fabric and I come out somewhere away from it so that you're not cutting the tail out and making the tail stick out of the thread and then you can just press it down a little bit and pull that thread up so that when you cut it if I can do this so that yeah well it broke off we're okay <laughs> anyway you want I tried that twice in a video this week you guys are getting a laugh out of me now um, and it failed <laughs> when I'm not on camera it never fails but anyway, there you go. There's your little cute little handmade pin cushion. And I like that. I may start using this one. It's a little smaller and more convenient. That is it. That's my little pin cushion tutorial. And I can't remember my viewer's name who wanted to see it. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all did. Peace, y'all. Bye-bye.